X-ray tubes need an input voltage of 20,000 volts to 130,000 volts to be applied across its anode and cathode. Whereas, a single phage mains supply is about 220 volts or three phase power supply of 440 volts. Let us consider, our single phage domestic power supply of 220 volts, alternating power supply. We need to increase, this 220 voltage AC supply to, kilovoltage range. This change is usually achieved by, combination of two transformers. Firstly, by using an auto transformer, and secondly by a step-up transformer. An auto transformer consists of a, long laminated iron core. And a single continuous coil, wound over it. This single winding acts as both, the primary and the secondary, winding of transformer. The primary section of an auto transformer has, a fixed connections that means fixed number of turns. 220 volt mains supply is connected to, the primary of the, auto transformer. But the secondary section have different taping points, to have variable turns. As the taping point changes, the ratio of turns in secondary to primary changes. Let's consider, when first tapping of major selector is tapped. Number of turns in secondary, divided by Number of turns in primary For first taping, turn ratio be 300 by 220. That means secondary taping has 300 turns and primary has 220 turns. Voltage across, secondary of a transformer as per transformer law is ratio of turns in secondary to primary multiplied by voltage across primary we put turn ratio for first taping here primary voltage applied to auto transformer is 220 volts on multiplication we will get a value of 300 volts that means first tapping transforms 220 volt to 300 volts Consider the second option for taping. The turn ratio be 250 divided by 220 in this case. After using this value in transformer law, we get a voltage of 250 across secondary. So, we can have different taping to have, variable voltage across secondary, of an auto transformer. While changing one taping to other, voltage variation across secondary is in, steps of 25 volts that is 75 volts then 100 volts, then 125 volt. For voltage variation of 1 volt or less, tapings of minor selector be used. Let's assume that, the turn ratio for last taping of minor selector is such that, it produces a voltage of, 1 volt across secondary. The final voltage across secondary will be voltage due to major selector plus voltage due to minor selector. That is in our current situation, 75 volts due to major and, 1 volt due to minor selector. Both adding to a voltage of 76 volts. As we shift from one tapping to other, voltages can be available at an increment of 1 volt. Let's fix our voltage across secondary at 180 volt, with 5 volt minor and 175 volt major tapping. This voltage of 180 volt, has to be increased to, kilo voltage range before, applying to X-ray tube. This transformation is achieved by a, step up transformer. Step-up transformer consists of an iron core. Primary coil winding is done on, one limb of iron core. Secondary coil winding is done on, other limb of iron core.
the secondary winding of high tension transformer is wound in, two parts and, the center of the winding is earthed, to reduce insulation. As per transformer law, voltage at secondary of step up transformer will be, turn ratio multiplied by, voltage across primary. Let's assume, turn ratio of our step up transformer, as 400. That is, secondary has 400 times more windings, than that of primary. As already discussed, 180 volt is our input voltage, to primary of step up transformer. Upon multiplication, we get a value of 32 kV. So, a potential difference of 32 kV is now applied, across X-ray tube as, it is connected to, secondary of step up transformer. So, with an auto transformer and step up transformer, we increased our, 220 volt supply to 32 kV. If radiograph needs a kV of 122, we need to select major and minor selector, so that we get a voltage of 305 volt at secondary of auto transformer. The step up transformer will increase the voltage 400 times, that is, 305 volt multiplied by 400 equals 122 kV. X-ray tubes, always need a positive potential at, anode then, cathode. But, voltage across secondary of, step up transformer is, alternating type, hence needs, rectification. Rectification changes AC voltage input to, pulsating DC. A bridge rectifier shown here, consists of, 4 PN junction diodes, D1, D2, D3, D4. Bridge rectifier takes input from secondary of step up transformer. An X-ray tube is connected, to the output of, bridge rectifier. Consider one half cycle of AC input, when, upper pole of secondary winding of transformer is, positive in respect of, lower pole. Here, diode 1 is forward biased as, P side of it, is connected to positive polarity. But diode 2 is reverse biased, as N side of it, is connected to, positive polarity. Hence D2 does not conduct, and can be omitted from the circuit. As D1 conducts, anode of X-ray tube gets, positive polarity. Diode 3, is forward biased as, N side of D3 is connected to, negative polarity. D4 is reverse biased as, P side of it, is connected to, negative polarity. As D4 is in reverse biased condition, it cannot conduct. It can be omitted, from the circuit. Cathode side of X-ray tube will get, negative polarity through, D3. Consider, other half cycle of AC, upper pole of secondary winding, at negative polarity in respect of, lower side. Diode 1 will be reverse biased as, negative polarity of it is connected to, P side of D1. Hence, D1 cannot conduct here, and can be omitted from, the circuit. Now D2, is in forward bias as, negative polarity of it is connected to, N side of D2. Cathode of X-ray tube will get, negative polarity as, it is connected through D2. D3, will be in reverse bias condition as, N side of D3 is connected to, positive polarity. Hence D3 does not conduct electricity, and can be omitted, from the circuit. D4, is now in forward biased condition as, P side of it connected to, positive polarity. Anode of X-ray tube will again have, a positive polarity through D4. So in either cycle of AC, bridge rectifier provides, a positive polarity to anode then, cathode. Which makes X-ray production possible in, both cycles of AC power supply. Next circuit element is, exposure switch. 
Exposure switch turns on and, turns off, X-ray exposure. Electronic devices like, silicon-controlled rectifiers and, vacuum tube triodes are used for switching, X-ray KV circuits. For simplicity, you may consider, it mechanically closes to start, the X-ray exposure and opens to, and the exposure. Now the question is, who gives command to the exposure switch for, starting an X-ray exposure? Well, when operator clicks on or presses start button, at control console, the exposure switch closes to, allow electricity to flow in the KV circuit. An exposure starts. So, operator starts it manually. Now, the question is, who terminates the exposure? As we are familiar, a diagnostic procedure needs exposures, in milliseconds. It is not possible by an operator to, terminate exposure manually after certain milliseconds. So, it's done electronically, by use of a timer. Timer is an electronic device. Timer counts time, as set by the operator, at the start of exposure. Timer sends stop signal to, switching circuit after counting down the set time. The switching circuit, upon receiving signal from timer, opens to, break kilovoltage circuit and, X-ray exposure stops. Switching is usually done in, primary circuit of, high tension transformer. Switching can also be done in, secondary circuit of, high tension transformer. A voltmeter called, preloading KVP meter, is placed at primary of high tension transformer. But it is calibrated to show, voltage across X-ray tube during exposure. A milliampharam meter or MA meter, is placed at secondary of, high tension transformer. It indicates tube current. DC current required for moving coil, MA meter is provided by rectifiers. Line voltage compensator is used to, stabilize any voltage fluctuations in, supply line voltage. Please like, share, subscribe and keep, all notifications on for updates.